Oh, are, we, are we actually recording right? No more swearing now. No more swearing. No more swear. Hello, this is Davinia McCall. <clears throat> you Good. are live in the Big Brother house. Please do not curse. Here we go. Good morning, everybody. Um, I would like to introduce you to a man who has become a great friend of mine, um, Mark. Mark was a nurse for 10 years um, and then worked in the medical um, industry for 20 years. And Mark has come up with something quite extraordinary. Um, he's developed an app. Um, and I'm going to go no further with this because I want to know, I want Mark to explain to you. Um, and the reason I'm here with my ridiculous hair, and some of you will know me as the menopausal mayhem mother um, from Facebook, where I spend a great deal of my time um, trying to remember who I am, um, where I am, and what day it is, because of my menopausal brain fog and all the rest of it. Um, so, Mark, we're gonna talk specifically about today why the app has been developed, what the app is all about, what it brings, to the patient and and we're just to, for today we're focusing on the menopause because i'm here and i'm really really important um well i'm not but the menopause you know what it's i mean important the menopause of women has been ignored for five thousand million years and it's time we got listened to mm -hmm. and it's time that we started finding solutions to our problems and 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 you know narrowing it down so how is the people with that going to work Right, well, first of all, um, the People With App provides uh, people with an opportunity to actually capture what's happening with their health. Um, throughout my career in health over the last 30 years, firstly as a nurse and then moving into the, to the pharmaceutical life science industry, um, I had the opportunity to tap into a lot of patients with respect to their experiences with symptoms but more importantly then talk to a lot of healthcare professionals. And it was really, this has been produced as a means to provide a solution for healthcare professionals to understand conditions so much better, but more importantly, this is focused towards the patient. This is a solution for the patient. Um, I had to laugh at your comment there that you had got up with your ridiculous hair and all the rest. I just would love to wake up with hair. But I'm not going to have that. I can't sit here and say that I've got up with ridiculous hair because this is how it looks every single day. Trust me, it is the only benefit you. Uh, the only benefit that we have is that we do have hair. Yeah, there you go. There you go. But um, going back to the, you know, the people with that. When I was nursing, I used to see patients presenting with the same condition with different symptoms. And symptoms escalated or progressed differently for different people. And it didn't matter what medications you put them on to, they were either less effective or more effective depending on the profile of the patient and the presentation of their symptoms. Not getting into the science of this, but I used to sit in healthcare practices where I was looking to go in to see these doctors from a professional perspective. And you get to talk to a lot of patients. And while sitting talking to these patients, people like talking about their health, do you know what I mean? And whenever you're in that healthcare environment where you're sat in a waiting room going in to see a doctor, you, you get this opportunity to engage and get an understanding of why people are going to see doctors. And in the majority of cases, whenever I was speaking to these patients, they were saying, I'm not so sure if my medication's working. So I'm going in to see the doctor to get an assurance that the medication's working. Or um, I'm not any better than what I was, so I'm going back into the doctor to find out what they can do for me. And it brings me to a story one day because we... One of the, the practices in one of the cities that I was working in at a time, um, the practice was set up as a major waiting room, Emma, and you'll love this, but there was a, a square section in the middle, so there was chairs over here. They were going in to see a group of doctors over in the right-hand corner. There was a section over on the left here. They were going in to see a group of doctors. But you used to have to queue in the seats do you know what I mean? So whenever the patient moved off the end to go in and see the doctor, then everybody moved over a chair. No. End, right? But every line was set up for all of the different doctors. 
And I remember one day I was sitting in the queue and I moved to the end and I had just come on out from seeing one of the doctors where I was talking to them about one of the, the medications that I was promoting for patients at that time. And whenever I come out, I joined a second queue to go in and see another doctor to make them aware. And this old lady was sitting beside me and obviously watching me coming out of one of the doctor's room and then joining the queue again. And she leaned across to me and she says, are you going in for a second opinion? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that being so funny because she was dead serious. I said, and I had to explain what job I was doing. So I was out trying to educate the doctors through the life science industry on how best to use medications for the therapy yeah. that I was area I was I was focusing on at that time. Well, I think that's that. Sorry, I think that's really quite an interesting point. You know, um, and, and you and I have spoken about this at length. <clears throat> In these days, we've got um, let's call it a week and a half, perhaps, as an average, in order to get to see our GP. We might have had <clears throat> prior to that three weeks, maybe four weeks of symptoms. Um, the natural human um, reaction to getting symptoms, I personally feel these days, especially as a menopausal woman, <clears throat> because the array of symptoms are so huge. And most of the time, and, and I'm speaking for myself, we don't actually realize that some of the symptoms we are experiencing are actually part of the menopause. So, you know, it, it, it immediately if I get some kind of pain here I'm oh I've got bowel cancer so we invariably put it off mm -hmm. so by the time you are sitting in said waiting room where people like Mark are getting third and fourth opinions yeah. or maybe she just thought you were really really confused or just kind of liked the whole queuing system yeah by the time you get there and you were sitting in front of that GP and I don't know whether this is the same experience for everybody else but you've had three or four weeks of worry, you've had a week and a half of waiting for an appointment, you've driven to the doctor's surgery, you've parked, you're then sitting in that waiting room. Fortunately, I've never seen the queuing system like that before, but you invariably, because they're always late. I mean, they're very cross and you're late, but um, they're always late. And then you go in and you've got eight minutes with this person. And that eight minutes is really important to you. And actually, it's really, really important to the GP because that's their job. And, and you know, they're, they're amazing people. What they want to do is instantly know what is wrong with you and be able to give you something to alleviate your symptoms. And that's exactly what you want. But the reality is, is that you walk in there and the first question is, what can I do for you? And my first thing is, can I have a big Mac and fries, please? Because I've totally forgotten why I'm there. Yeah. And... And this is where I think we, we, we need to be telling people about what you have done with this people with her, which yeah. is pure genius because of the simplicity of it. So tell us about what this is and how it's going to work. And in my mind, as a menopausal woman, it's going to change the face of how I, any GP appointment I have, any kind of interaction with a healthcare professional and an outcome for me that's going to be positive. Well, it's all about better outcomes, but you know, your GPs are very educated people. So they've went to college for quite a few years. They have been working with patients for year after year after year. And that exposure to patients allows them to actually gain more experience as into how to manage different um, patients and how they present. But if you think about menopause, Patients with menopause, when they're going through menopause, they still have the other underlying conditions that were happening throughout their life or over the last three or four years. So they could still have anxiety. They can still have, so they can have anxiety and they're being treated for anxiety. They can have irritable bowel syndrome. They're being treated for that. They can have arthritis. The arthritis doesn't go away whenever you're going through the menopause. But whenever you're going through the menopause, does the change in your body affect how the medications are working that need to be controlling the other conditions that you have? But nobody comes in just with menopause. There are very small numbers just present with single conditions. But how does a doctor understand how to manage a 
45 year old female who's got arthritis and maybe anxiety and what is the difference in that profile and what medications do they require in comparison to somebody who's 55 who's got just got menopause and got nothing nothing else that's really an underlying condition and these variables that are now being presented to doctors they're so difficult for them to get exposure to that level of experience and what the people with app does it allows them to access how all of these different profiles of patients are being managed so that it can provide them with support and information how to actually manage patients moving forward. Like, so if I asked you a question now, Emma, obviously your mother went through the menopause, obviously your aunts went through the menopause, obviously there's people that you know that are older than you that have went through the menopause. If these ladies, had have captured all of the intelligence as into their profile, as into what underlying conditions they had, as into what medications work more effectively for their symptoms. If they had captured all of that information over the last five or 10 years, how much better would the medical profession be today in the understanding of menopause, how it affects all of the different conditions, and what treatments are most effective for what profiles. How much better would they be informed today if that was captured? Yeah, I mean, it, it goes without saying. And I think, you know, having, because I have used the people with app, um, and <clears throat> essentially, ladies, um, what you do is you, you, you download it from the app store. It is completely free. It's really, really, this part is really important because I know how skeptical people can be and I was one. It is completely free. You will never, ever be marketed to. Um, the people with app are not selling anything. It is all absolutely patient focused. And what it does is it provides you with a memory. So let's say for argument's sake, um, I'm gonna take my own, my own um, experience. I get hot flushes. Um, I went overnight from being really relaxed. Um, well, no, I've always been slightly neurotic and bonkers, um, <clears throat> but woke up one- You to that, Emma. <laughs> yeah, I, I had to. I mean, there, there are people out there that sadly know me. Um, anxiety overnight. I mean, and, and irrational anxiety. It's not, oh my goodness, um, you know, my car is, um, it's not going very well. I'm worried to go out. Just to completely irrational anxiety which can then lead to depression, um, weight gain. Dear Lord, I am the world's fastest inflating woman. I mean, it's extraordinary. And, and my diet has not changed. Um, it, it just has happened. But what is really interesting about what you can do with the app, because the app is actually really easy to use and it's on your phone. I mean, how many of us spend, um, you know, seven or eight, okay, maybe I'm bad seven or eight hours a day on your phone. Here's something that you can put in, all your symptoms, um, any medications that you're taking. Um, and basically, when you get a hot flush, and if you haven't got time to do it at the time, you can just say, right, I'm having another hot flush. It also gives you the ability to do the severity of the symptoms. So you've got one to 50. Um, you can see how they vary throughout the day and at night, etc. Now. That might seem like a strange thing to do to actually, um, you know, monitor and, and write down every symptom. Lots of women, weirdly enough, keep diaries. They, 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 they keep a journal of, of, their, of, of their menopausal journey, of where their fibromyalgia has, you know, got worse and better because the doctors have asked them to do that. And here you've got a bit of kit that you use every single day of your life. And this beautiful little app sits in the corner. I don't know whether you can see it. It's on there. It's that one there. And it's the easiest thing in the world to use. And what's absolutely brilliant about it is you can do it at the end of the day. It'll take two or three minutes maybe, or you can do it during the course of the day. And what I, and, and Mark had to slightly talk me through this because I'm very blonde, very menopausal, and you know, part of the brain has left the building, is there is this m wonderful button that just says report. And up comes a graph that I know that if I were to present this graph of my, and, and it's for each individual symptom that you experience, 
if you were to present that to your GP, I can guarantee, okay, not in these days of COVID, they'd hug you. Because rather than having to prize information out of you where you're going, oh, yeah, I can't actually remember what day of the week it is. When did I last have a heart? I can't, yeah, it's hot flushes yeah, now. Man. Yeah, man, you, you, this, is, this is so right. But especially now with COVID and not being able to access services, you know, whenever you now you have um, an opportunity to speak with, speak with a doctor, you know, they have a very short window, but for the first period of that window, they're asking all about the history of your symptoms. So they're having to ask you, right, well, how often has this happened? When did it happen? When did it start? So on and so forth. But you could, you could utilize the time that you have with the doctor from a remote perspective to actually deal with what is needed to be done for you which is specific to your presentation because this can be sent to the doctor prior to the engagement. You can share. I mean, I mean it's ingenious. It's ingenious. Yeah. Um, and it is for us. And, and once again, um, uh, today we're talking purely about menopausal women of which, as I say, I'm one. Um, and I, and I write about the menopause just in case anyone doesn't know. Um, because I think it's something that we need to talk about. And, and, and one of the major problems um, I have is memory loss and, and brain fog and all that kind of thing. And this is where this is so ingenious because this is talking medical speak and we are not medical people unless we are doctors that are going through menopause, which a great deal of us are not. Um, so this is a complete win-win situation, is it? There's, there's, there's absolutely no downside to this. I can't, I'm desperately looking for one. I've got to be honest, because I'm, because I'm a miserable old cow. But Emma, there's, I'm a menopausal there's, woman. there's two big advantages here. The first advantage is the personal advantage. So whenever you go to your doctor, you're having discussions that are relevant for you because you've captured accurate information. And after a couple of weeks of you using the app, I, I remember one of the things that you said to me was that the hot flushes and the anxiety, where you previously understood them as affecting you this way, whenever you started recording the symptoms, you actually realized that your anxiety, I think, was more intense than what you previously thought it was and your hot flushes were not as bad or as frequent as what you previously thought they were. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and also what I hadn't realized was how more frequent they were at night than they were during the day. Mm. Hadn't noticed that. But once I started recording them, yeah. um, it became very clear. So, and, and, and that intelligence, that information for you is going to be invaluable whenever you go back to your doctor and say, look, doctor, where I previously thought, well, actually, whenever I've recorded this, which, which you have told me to do, but I've now provide, I've found a resource that allows me to do this so much easier. But what is happening now is I'm actually able to see this is what's happening. This is, this is actually what's happening. Like we, we as a, 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 a race, a, a human race, like we, we think our doctors should know everything. Do you know what I mean? And we're expecting our doctors to understand. But well, we, we expect them to understand how best to treat us. Yeah. But, but we, we don't even understand how the condition is really affecting us. So if, if we're not recording how the condition is actually affecting us with a symptom presentation, how do we then communicate to our doctors accurately that this is actually what's happening with us? And then and then we wonder, oh, the doctor didn't get it right. Of course he didn't get it right. The reason why he didn't get it right is because you communicated to him what you thought was happening to you because you didn't record it. Yep. yep. And you're trying to capture, like if you think about some of the conditions out there, like chronic illnesses, people with arthritis have to go and see their doctor every six months. People with Crohn's, people with colitis, people with epilepsy, people with um, dementia, people with Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, these people are all going to see their doctor for seven or eight minutes every six months. And they get these seven or eight or 10 minutes are being used by the doctor to find out what happened in the previous six months to see if they're going in the right direction with your treatments. And that intelligence, you're supposed to remember that. 
and you're supposed to be able to communicate that to the doctor in that seven or eight minute period. Well, if you don't have it captured, how do you, can you, how do, how do you do that? I don't understand how people do this. And like what we are, tra- what we are finding now, the, and this is something, there's quite a number of menopausal women have come on and they're starting to track their information. And by consolidating this information, what we're actually seeing now is that people with IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, with menopause, whenever they have the menopause, both of their conditions are being affected negatively as a result of them now going through the change of their, their body and so on and so forth. But what we're also finding is that one is influencing the other and that intelligence can be fed back to the healthcare professionals so that they can be suitably prepared to manage patients of the future. Well, do you have IBS? Yes, I do. Well, whenever you have a flare up, these medications are not effective. We've, we now know that they're not effective when you have a flare up of your IBS. And maybe whenever you have a flare up your IBS, you may have to come back to me in order for us to have a discussion. Or alternatively, this might be a different mode of administration for your medication that's going to ensure that at least your menopause has been managed while you're going through your IBS. And it's it's just this learning, this knowledge is going to support, like you have daughters, Emma, I'm I'm right in saying that, aren't I? I I do indeed, 16 and 17. I have a daughter. And I have nieces and I have, I, have, I have all of these people that I care about. And if we, can, if we can capture this intelligence around menopause, it will so support the next generation so that they can get better outcomes. And it will so inform the healthcare professionals out there as into what works, what doesn't work for all of the variable health profiles. And yeah. that's what we're trying to do. As you said at the start, Emma, I'm a nurse, all right? I started nursing in, in my late teenage years. And what I've been doing throughout my career from that date is caring. I care for people. And I want people to get better treatment outcomes. And I want people to stop taking medications that are ineffective and just take medications that are effective. The people with app provides them with an opportunity to capture that intelligence. As in, is the medication working? Is the medication not working? It does not inform you to stop taking medications. You take that intelligence to your healthcare professional and they then make the decisions on the basis of you providing them with the intelligence. Yeah, and I I mean, I had a conversation with um, a doctor two days ago and I I was absolutely gobsmacked. There are plus minus 74 different types of HRT out there. Now, um, how on earth does a G, I mean, it, it must be literally, when I say a process of elimination, I like to see it as a bit of a sort of a detective mystery. You know, you've got a lady come in, I think I'm going through the menopause. She hasn't had a period for six, seven months. How on earth do you know, or does a GP know, or a healthcare professional know, which on earth HRT to put this person on? It, it's got to be trial and error. However, with the people with that, over you know the next few months, years, if the more people we get signed up, um, there's going to become um, very evident pockets of health profiles, whether it be height, weight, um, presentation, um, other underlying health issues, and this will narrow this down surely that so that the, the, the lady will come in with with her health profile, her health in her pocket on her phone, this thing that remember girls we use all the time, and the doctor will look at this and and, and I'm going to call it a color. You're slightly a purple lady, you know. I'm I am inclined to go with this kind of HRT because it's worked for. Th- a thousand other women who present with your profile. Yeah, that's what that, this is about. That that's where we that's where you're going with this. That's what, that's the that's the vision for the future. This is all about people's experiences today 
being captured to present better experiences for people of the future. And, and as I said earlier, Emma, if your mother and your aunts and the generation prior to now had have captured this level of intelligence, today you would be going through a better experience because you would be presented with those medications. In, the, in fact, to be honest with you, I would be very surprised if today they had that level of intelligence that there would not even be better medications because this would inform the creation of better medications with, that were specific to your profile. Yeah, and yeah. that's what this is about. But for the here and now, this is about the individual value. In the future, this is about consolidating all of this intelligence. So your daughters, my daughters, my nieces, my the people that I care about, the people that you care about, the next generation are being presented with a better experience of going through this change in their life, yeah. despite, despite the variance or the diversity of their health profile. And a yeah. health profile, people are listening to this, like a health profile, what is a health profile? You know, for me, a health profile is, your age, your race, your ethnicity, your gender, obviously it's female in this case, it's the concomitant, it's the other medications that you're taking, it's the other conditions that you're suffering from, it's the symptoms that you present, but it's capturing that level of detail. But the commitment that's required from you as a user, like we have created help videos that we have posted that allow people to come in and see how much commitment it takes from them as a time perspective. It takes two minutes to register, and it probably, if you were to commit a minute or two of your time every day, you would have populated your symptoms, you would have populated your medications, you would have populated and captured all of this necessary intelligence that will allow your doctor to come up with a better solution so that your symptoms are better controlled. And that's what this is about, Emma. That's insane. Yeah. So, I mean, well, from a menopausal woman's point of view, having worked with you, Mark, I would implore every menopausal woman who sees this film to please download the People With app. You're going to make a huge difference to yourself but you're also going to make a huge difference to all the women around you at this precise moment. But then, as Mark said, let's start thinking about our kids. Let's start thinking about our friends' kids who are probably 10 years away. Um, let's start thinking about the future. Um, this makes sense. And I cannot tell you, I have, I have really um, looked at this app from a very, very close perspective as a sceptical um, woman there, there, is, there is literally no catch. It's completely win-win. It's completely free. All the data is, I mean, Mark won't know who on earth you are. You are just a health profile to him and the team. Um, this is about- I, I, would, I would argue with- We don't care, we don't care. We don't want to know that Emma Skeets is on this. We want to know- That's a bit rude. There's no need for that. <laughs> I mean, we don't want to know who is actually using it, but we want to know the profile so that we can support more people. Yeah, exactly. Help. And I'm going to say something that people might get a little bit affronted by, but I would argue with any woman who says, I'm not going to do this, um, either because I can't be bothered, I don't trust it, it's not going to help me now, come on girls, we're in this together, it's time that we started to make a difference. And um, having well, I say studied the menopause, having um, talked um, infinitum with menopausal women over the last five years because I write about it and I, and I listen and I get so much feedback. Um, women want a resolution to this. They want to get better. And also what's really important is that we, and something that, 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 that came to light the other day, we live longer as statistically post menopausal than we do pre-menopausal um, and so if we're really suffering and we get the, because quite a lot of well I think there are probably more psychological effects from the menopause if we end up with serious mental health issues at the end of this because of either the physical or the mental symptoms that don't get 
taken care of, that don't get dealt with, that don't get treated properly because there isn't enough intelligence, then we're wasting the rest of our lives. So every woman out there, what have you got to lose? You've got everything to gain. And if you, if you can't bring yourself to do it for yourself, please do it for somebody else. Please do it for your kids. If you haven't got kids, do it for your friends' kids, do it for your nieces, do it for your nephews. This is really important. And there is no catch. If there was a catch, I'd be telling you about it. There is no catch. Please, we, please. we are very transparent, Emma, and we have been from day one, all right? And, you know, if people come in and even follow us on people with, we, we are totally transparent as to what we're doing and how we're doing it. And if anybody has any questions or any doubts, just reach out. We will, we will respond to them. Yeah. Well, I think this is really important. And um, this is something that I wish somebody had done 20 years ago. So, um, Mark, thanks so much. And, and, and really, ladies, we should be thanking Mark. Um, and, uh, you know, let, let, let's get signing up for this. I have. Many other women have. We need... There are 13 million women in the UK who are menopausal this year. There's going to be another lot coming in perimenopausal next year. Let's get everybody signed up and start making this journey just a little bit less painful. And this is not the twilight of our lives, girls. This is the harvest. This is our time. Um, and what Mark and his team want to do is to make the journey to that, to the end of the menopause, just that it's so much easier because at the end of the day, Mark, as you've always said to me, it's a really simple thing. It's about alleviating symptoms. That's all it is. Menopause is not an illness. No, it's, it's, it's not an illness, on, but it can lead to illness. And, yeah. it's, and it can compound and make the management of other conditions quite difficult that you already have. Because there's changes taking place in the structure and the functioning of your body that can compound how other medications and other... Um, other uh, conditions have been affected. What we are looking to do is, it's not, we're not going to remove menopause. This is something that's going to have to be done. But what we're effectively trying to say is that we're trying to reduce the level of impairment that is caused by the menopause so that you can function as you function. As, so you can function as the person with that personality. So just because you've been through the menopause, if your symptoms have been controlled effectively, you can still expose and, and express yourself the way you expressed yourself. You can still be the person that you were because you're getting control of those symptoms that are impairing you. If them symptoms continue to impair you, how can you be you? Do you know what I yeah. mean? And that's what we're, we're about. But just to assure everybody as well, we're not focusing on menopause. We're doing menopause, but we're also looking at other chronic illnesses, we're looking at Crohn's, we're looking at colitis, we're looking at epilepsy, we're looking at Parkinson's, we're looking at all of these. This is about helping people. So it's people with, for a reason, it's people with impairments as a result of symptoms. That's what it's about. It's not about your condition. It's about, have we got you on the right treatments and are they having the necessary effect? Are they causing side effects? And it's then having the level of information at your fingertips, as Emma keeps referring to, having your health in your pocket, at your fingertips, so that whenever you walk in the door to your doctor, you never walk out and, oh, I got that wrong. I should have told them. I should have done this. I should have done that. I didn't tell them. It's all there. And in fact, even you do forget to tell them, it's still recorded. You can send them, as Emma called it, a report which is outlining exactly. But we will find out so much information about how best to treat you and people like you in the future, as long as we can capture the intelligence today. That's what People With is about. It's about making people better as best we can. And if they can't be fixed, making them as comfortable as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And wrapping this up, um, um, and, with, and with a little bit of tongue in cheek here. Um, um, you scaring me, Emma? Don't do that. Yeah, no. Here we go. Um, as, as a male, as a male nurse, and I, and, and I've I've heard reports. You, know, you were the most, and you are the most amazing nurse, and you are incredibly caring. Um, do you have any vested interest in um, 
um, menopausal women becoming a little bit more reasonable? It can do no I know you're married. I'm not smiling. I'm being, it's a, you've put me in the spot here, Emma. <laughs> this, is not, this is not a good thing. Um, I, it, think you, I think most men have a vested interest in this oh, work. Everybody has, menopausal women. Everybody has vested interest. But I suppose like, the focus towards menopause was, you know, it affects so many people. Yeah. You know what I mean, and, you're, and, and it's going to affect the same amount of people next year and the same amount, like population is getting no smaller for the foreseeable. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I just think that it's, you know, uh, as a van- you're, you're not, you're not, you're not going to admit to this, are you? No, no I, have, I have a wife going through the menopause. And- there we go. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> and she's on this and she's tracking this and, and her, her symptoms are being well controlled. Um, for the majority, you know, you can't. You, what, what the shed and the padlock? <laughs> well, okay, hold on a second, dear. I told you that in secret. Anyway, <laughs> but um, you know, for the for the value that 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 my wife is getting, but it's not. It's about everybody. It's, Emma, it's about every. It's about the female. It's about the woman. Yeah. Who's no, not, I'm. I'm. Pu- I, of course, I'm putting your leg. And, and any, anybody that knows me, I, I. I. I try and see the lighter side of it, but you know. The, 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 the stark reality is that um, the, the menopause has so many ripples um, and it isn't just the physical stuff. You know, uh, I'm a, girls, if I, I'm not lecturing you here, but hair loss, tooth loss, um, you know, bone density, um, aches and pains, weight gain, worst one ever, but the anxiety and, and all put all these things together. You've got lack of libido, um, you know, sex life dies. And, and with all these things, actually life starts to change. Marriages break down. Um, you know, you end up dealing with things that you <clears throat> never thought you'd have to deal with. And this is, and I read about this all the time because of, because of the blog that I write and because of the group that I run, I, I hear really, really harrowing stories, really harrowing stories. And these are women that are just simply not being helped. And that is not necessarily down to a, um, a, a the downfall of the healthcare professional. It's that she, she doesn't. This the ladies don't know how to articulate what is actually going on with them. So yeah, I mean, my joke with you, Mark, was you know because um, you know everybody's got a vested interest in this. Um, at the end of the day, you want your wife to be happy. My husband wants me to be happy. Um, partners want their other partners to be happy. The menopause is something, as I've, as I've always said, there is no little side gate that you can slip a million quid into and go, you know, you can avoid it. But we can make it better. Yeah. And this is just the most simple, but, and most things in life that are simple are the most powerful tools. Yeah. Um, and I cannot implore strongly enough that women do this. There is no reason not to. But even I, I, if they don't want to do it for themselves. No. Um, there's, people, there's people out there, you know, and there's, everybody's got different personalities and they don't want to do this for themselves. But maybe they want to, maybe they're a giver. Do you know what I mean? I want to give this information so that people of the females of the future, all right? Yeah. So if, I don't, if you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for, do it for others. Yeah, perfect. It has been an absolute pleasure as always. Emma, thank you very much for, for asking me to come on and do this. And I really appreciate all the conversations that we have. Um, I'm learning so much and I can assure you um, every day is a school day for me. But whenever I'm speaking to you, Emma, I, I, I'm going through university. Like, so um, it's been brilliant. Thank you very much. And I appreciate um, your passion and your support for what we're trying to do. And, and the fact that you can engage with people that listen to you to, to maybe introduce them to this opportunity. Well, I, as I said, and I, and I think I've probably said it far too many times, it's win-win, there's no catches, and I would challenge any woman to say to me that there is a reason they wouldn't do this. And, 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 we would, and there, there is no reason to not do it. Um, it's really important. Um, the healthcare, the way healthcare is going, um, you know, we've, we've obviously had this dreadful pandemic. Um, 
the future is unsure, it's uncertain, the NHS is under pressure. This is going to help us, to help the healthcare professionals, which means that you're gonna get better treatment. There is no reason to not do this. So, um, and I feel really passionately about that because I read, I, I get private message every single day on my blog and in my group from people who are absolutely desperate and I wanna help and I've met somebody who's sitting right in front of you now with the most to die for Northern Irish accent, um, who wants to do the same thing, but actually he's actually gone out and done something about it. So good on you, Mark. And um, let's get people signed up on people with, there's, there's no reason not to, and, and actually so many thousands of reasons to do it. Fantastic. So, fantastic. fantastic. We're looking forward to hearing from you girls. I couldn't say that any more succinctly, so I'm just gonna leave it at that, Emma. <laughs> All right. You look after yourself. All the best. We'll catch up soon. Okay.